Hello, I'm Professor Matthew Rotella, and in this tutorial I'm going to go over using the Revolve tool to uh, uh, to make a pretty classic object using the Revolve tool, a wine glass. The Revolve tool is useful for all sorts of things, uh, but it's, uh, it's a way that can help you uh, quickly generate a lot of uh, curved objects very quickly. I mean, if you're trying to like uh, fill out a scene like a kitchen, like uh, it could be a very useful tool because it can help you really bang out generating things like plates and glassware and vases and things like that. Um, it's not usually. Uh, it can help uh, create the bases of certain objects, but mainly it's good for just like really quick object generation. Uh, but anyway, first of all, I'm going to bring in a reference image. Always a good idea to model from reference. So image plane, import image, and I should have a wine glass right here. And all right, yeah, and actually all of this is going to basically be done here in my front orthograph and let's see it looks like I'm not perfectly lined up on the middle of my glass which I say is about there uh, or maybe I was I don't know it's hard to say my stem is off center for sure let me see I can just Touch better, perhaps. I'm not sure. Doesn't matter. Um, what I got here is fine, and this is how it's going to go. So I'm going to go into my curves, and I'm going to use my Bezier tool, and I'm going to start here. And we're actually going to end up wanting to snap this to my grid at the center. So I'm going to start there. And just. Basically, go out, and then I can't quite trace it because I want this is going to be flat, and then gonna go up, and then I'm gonna follow. And I can click and drag on the anchor point to reposition it. I'm going to follow this. All the way. Around. And up and over, and I can flatten that out later. And then you're going to want to make the inner wall of the glass. Mm 
Again, try and keep it nice and precise. Thin, and then it's gonna thicken out towards the bottom. Just clicked on my the last one that I was working with. And I can make my edits. You know what? I'm gonna come back to that one later. And then it's gonna come on this guy, and it's gonna come in. Get my thickness for the bottom of the glass, and then right there. Now, for uh, shaping things up and making sure that this revolves properly, I'm going to hit snap to grid because you're going to want to make sure that each of these is perfectly on an origin axis uh, meaning one of these two bold lines right here on the viewport I'm going to turn off my snapping and now just move this one point I placed back down. Now for a few of these I'm going to want to alter uh, my bezier. So for these two up here for example I'm going to go into curves, bezier curves. Uh, I'm going to break my anchor tangents that way I can edit them individually for both of them part nice and straight but maybe not quite so you know like maybe get it curved a little bit but in any case I know uh, zoom out a little there and that and make sure that I'm not crossing my wall anywhere in here. I'm gonna get this one and go here, busy busy a curve for uh, tangent options. I'm gonna break them here as well so that I can get a hold of this one. consistent there and all right yeah and that should about do it now hide my reference imagery so you can get a better look at my curve here and again I made sure that the control vertices are directly Above my origin axis and now I can go ahead and here and hit revolve and when I do that I get a wine glass that if I bring my reference back again matches it exactly and now, I want to get this and convert it 
two polygons. So, and if I didn't uh, go back down and around, then I wouldn't have it made with thickness. Uh, and if I didn't match it up perfectly on the origin here, then when I revolved it, I would either have a hole or I'd have geometry that was clicking, uh, clipping through itself. So those two details are very important, which it looks like I may somehow still have some down here. Uh, which it's very odd. somehow just barely off and that was ruining everything so you got to see exactly what I mean it has to be very precise so I re-snapped it to where I wanted it to be and revolve and now I'm perfectly fine okay very good now I want to convert this to polygons so I want to go to modify convert nerves to polygons and I'm gonna hit up I'm going to hit my options. By default, I'll just set it back to default. It's going to be set to triangles. Don't want that. I want quads. And I don't want standard fit. I'm going to set it to general. Now, these will determine how many subdivisions my geometry will have when I convert it to polygons. And you'll see if I just hit convert on my uh, with just three, my evolve service, there isn't nearly enough. So, V will in, in, insert vertical subdivisions. So, if I wanted to make it like as if I had modeled it from a 12 sided cylinder, I can just put 12, and uh, let's see, I don't, and U will make my vertical subdivisions. And now I don't need to go too crazy. Like, I want it to be smooth, so maybe I'll say 30 and see what I get. So I'll hit apply, and this is what I end up with, which now you can see I have some pretty nice clean geo going all the way around, like it's all clean quads, but looks like there are a few things, like it's not quite as smooth as I'd like going vertically, so I'll put in even more, maybe I'll double it to 60. And uh, this is one of the advantages of generating geometry this way, is uh, you can determine just how smooth you'd like it. And I'd say that's a lot better. That's quite acceptable as far as the uh, smoothness of the geo that I would like to have. And uh, that's about it. Uh, that's the whole process of revolving some geo and then going nerves to polygons. Uh, and just so you can see the kind of crazy messed up geo it gives you if you hit standard fit, which you don't want, uh, I'll hit apply, and you see I have all these crazy edge loops, and they're terminating in all sorts of weird ways, and you don't need any of that. Just, I'll just dump that in the garbage. And also something that's neat about this is if I go like this, and I go to control vertex, and I'll switch it back to this view. I can change the shape of things after the fact, and you can see it even changes on my converted geometry. Uh, and to stop your original NURB services from affecting your now created poly services, you can just delete your history, and that should stop happening, or make a duplicate of the mesh, and that should solve your issue as well. Um, so anyway, yeah, that that's it as far as a basic overview of the Revolve tool. But like you can see how, especially this, if I were to just keep making goblets of different types just by maneuvering these uh, various uh, control vertices around, then I could even just generate goblet after goblet like crazy. And uh, I think that's 
pretty darn nifty. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you did some good learning.